So hello everybody, this Friday, so it's time for another DAX Fridays. This time we're going to talk about geometrical means or how to calculate. You know, in previous DAX Fridays last week, we calculated the uh, investment return on investment using the functional product. And now we're going to calculate, okay, the average of the returns. How much did we make on the years that we had an investment? So I thought this was going to be an easy video, but holy moly, it is not. So. Let's go through it. Let's go through geometrical mean, the average or the arithmetical mean and the median and see what's going on. There's a lot, a lot going on. Let's see. Um, so here I have a portfolio. This is year one, two, three, four, five. And I have portfolio zero. And these are the rates of portfolio zero. They are completely positive. We have portfolio one that has one negative return. And we have portfolio two that only has been running for four years, where I put it on the same table. I want to see you something. And here we have the same portfolio two, but with only the four years. I'll show you why in a second. So I'm not going to write any DAX, but I'll show you the formulas because otherwise this is going to take forever. Here's the thing. The first thing, if you want to know the average of the return, you say, oh, we use average, right? So we go to average P0 is the average, the average of the column of the return. And if we said the average of portfolio zero is 8.8, .8, all positive numbers, here we have one negative number, the average is eight. And then we have here, the average of P2 is 35, and the average of P22, that's this one, which is the same as that one, but no blanks, is also the same. So average is ignoring the blanks. And it's saying, okay, I have four numbers, I divide it by four instead of five. Hold that thought. Okay, now, geometrical mean. So why would we do a geometrical mean? So ge geometrical mean is very close to the median. So it neutralizes the outliers. And we have big numbers. It just takes care of that and gives you a more precise mean or average. Let's do this. We're going to calculate now the geometrical mean. Let me copy this. Hello. Yes, the crease is low and there is nothing in here. I don't know why. So now we're going to put in here the geometrical mean of P0. And you can see it up there, geometrical mean P0, it calculates 7.5. The geometrical mean will always be slightly smaller than the arithmetical or the average. Okay, so works beautifully. Now we go to here, P1, and then I put geometrical P1. And it gives me 7.5. And the P1 is exactly the same, but it's just taking the rates of P1. Oh no, it's not P1. Minus 7.5. Now, let's go in here and we're going to put the geometrical P2. So the one with the blank that I'm thinking that is taken as a zero. It takes the blank, makes it as a zero, and returns a non, not a number. And NAN is not a number. So basically, the re return was not a number. And I will show you why. And then we're going to get the geometrical mean for the one down there. And now we're suspecting that it would give me a number the same like this, but it didn't. And I cannot understand for the love of me why this will give a number and this one won't. I was guessing that it won't give a number, none of these. Try to find out, don't know. If you know, comment box. But you're not going to use this method, so don't worry. So now, what's going on? Why is it giving us not a number? If we look at the geometrical mean, the manual calculation, so if we put this one in here, geometrical i'm copying the fields because i want them formatted small otherwise they get too big uh, so the geomet if if you don't have your mean the way to calculate it is like this 
so the logarithm of the average exponential okay now the logarithm of a negative number cannot be solved and that's why you get not a number so what is i don't know if you mean is syntax sugar for that or they've calculated some other way i have no idea but that's the way it is so I was expecting this to give me also an error, and it is not doing that, which I think is super weird. So again, if you know how, to, how it is done, shout, shout me in the comment box and let us know. Okay, so there's the thing. Geometrical means are supposed to be used with positive numbers only. Okay? When negative numbers are involved, you use median instead. But if you insist and you want to calculate the neg geometrical mean with negative numbers, I'm going to show you how to do it. So we're going to copy these and these and these. It's so slow. Scary slow. Okay, we're going to put it in there. And now we're going to put the uh, geometrical mean what is it? P1. Is it this one? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you what, what that is. So what it does is if you add plus one to the rate and then you discount one, it is a way to get actually the geometrical mean. So you don't have a negative number fit in the formula and it will give you something. Now, Take a look at this. If we take now geometric mean P2, it says 16%. And this is where you see the difference between outliers or not. So as you can see P1, the numbers, all the numbers are quite close. So the average and the geometrical mean is very, very close to each other. So it doesn't matter if you use average or geometrical mean, that's fine. Now. Here, when we have a, an outlier, so a number that is significantly bigger than any other numbers in the data set, in this case is 150%, you'll see that 35% is the average and 16 is the mean, the average for the geometrical mean. And if you look at the numbers, 16 sounds like a more reasonable result than 35 because you have 10, 30, 10. So you have more 10s and 30s, and this is 35. This, this outlier is pushing our average on the wrong direction. Now, this is what I want to show you. Now, if we put the geometrical mean exactly the same formula, so we're using geometrical geo mean x, so we can actually do 1 plus, you can see here that it says 20. What's going on here? What's going on here is that this, the geometrical mean is counting the blank when it's doing the calculation. While in here that you see that we don't have the blanks, exactly the same numbers, but no blanks. So make sure that you don't have blacks, blanks when you're doing geometrical mean because it will count as a value and you don't want that. Okay. So just warn, especially when you have the one plus, right? So you are forcing that value to calculate. So make sure that it's not there for negative numbers. Um, so should you use geometrical mean for negative or zero numbers? I calculated the mean, the median, the median, and you'll see the results. So this is for the, oh, so slow. So there you go. And now here I'm going to put the median for P1. The median of the value is 10. The median for B2 is 10. And the median for P3 P22, I mean, the one that with a blank, it is 10, okay? So you see there is a huge difference between 
geometrical mean and median when there are negative values. And the median that has, look at the video that I have on median, it does the same thing. It just reduces the effect of outliers. The median actually gets the middle number in the data set, right? So the choice is yours. You can choose average, geometrical mean and median as you prefer, but now you know the actual results depending on what you choose. So average, when there are no outliers, when there are outliers, positive numbers, geometrical mean, otherwise median. That would be my way of reasoning. Let me know in the comment box if you think otherwise and why. We're looking forward to hear your thoughts. Okay, so as I said, I thought it was going to be a nice video got out of hand, but I'm always asking the same, like, why? <laughs> and then I end up in these rabbit holes. Anyhow, I hope you have a great weekend. It is Friday after all, so it is sunny here in Sweden, so hopefully we have a nice weekend. I'll see you again on Monday, as always, and take care. Bye.